Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, commissioners and staff, and welcome to the City of Person Planning Board meeting this evening, Wednesday, January 6, 2021, of 6.30 p.m. for a webinar session. Chairwoman Northrop. Yes, please rise, everyone, and happy new year to all of you, but please rise for the flag salute. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Okay. Okay. One moment, let me just get this out of here. Okay, commissioners, planners, plan, I'm sorry, commissioners, planning board staff, ladies and gentlemen, as chairwoman of the City of Patterson's Planning Board, I call this meeting of 1621 to order. I hereby state that all the provisions of the State of New Jersey public meeting law have been fully and completely met, that the notice of provisions required have been properly posted in the Planning Board office and with the City of Patterson clerk, and that the public notice and advertisements have been published in the Herald News on December 18th, 20, in 1920, in accordance with the 2020, I'm sorry, December 18, 2020, in accordance with the law, and that the copies of such notice and public advertisements are on file at the Planning Board Office, as is also the agenda listing the applications to be taken up by the Planning Board at this meeting. The procedure tonight will be in accordance with the rules, regulations, and bylaws as heretofore determined by the Planning Board at its office in the Municipal Complex in the City of Patterson. Roll call, please. Commissioners, Commissioner Fisher is absent. Commissioner Ahmed? Present. Commissioner Brooks is absent. Commissioner Savalos? Commissioner, please. Commissioner, please. Commissioner Santana is absent. Commissioner Issa. Commissioner Eugene. Yes, I'm here. Commissioner Present. Councilman Kalik is absent. And Commissioner Cleese, I do not see her, so I will say that she is absent. And Chairwoman also present. Thank you. Okay, uh, notes pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act addressing the effect of coronavirus measures on the next public meeting, consistent with the coronavirus related restrictions of Executive Order Number 107, given on Saturday, March 21st, 2020, by Governor Philip D. Murphy, the Planning Board of the City of Patterson will not conduct in person participation of the public at all future meetings until further notice. However, public participation will be available by means of communication equipment pursuant to NJSA 10 colon 4 8 commencing on April 15, 2020. Though there may potentially be a practical need for a limited number of administrative, technical, or other city personnel to be present in or near the Council Chambers third floor City Hall, 155 Market Street, Patterson, New Jersey, in person participation. Of the public is prohibited. Nevertheless, for reasons of compliance with the said executive order number 107, public participation will be available by calling 973-321-1579 and the meeting ID is 7116800001. And I will repeat that later on. Okay, planning board regular meeting of Wednesday, January 6, 2021 at 6.30 p.m on the date and time that the meeting is scheduled to commence. The public may also participate in the meeting by accessing the website of the City of Patterson, www.pattersonnj.gov, and following the emailing for the meeting, www.pattersonnj.gov slash planning board. 
So this evening we have two applications on the agenda. It might be very cool. Um, so Mr. George, you're telling me that we're going to do the 20 P uh, Piante Street. Is that correct, first? Um, we could do on the 19th and out in the toy Chianti. All right, which one do you prefer? I'll go I have, I have 19 Van Houten in front of me. Okay, I'm going to go with 19 Van Houten, that's fine. Okay, 19 Van Houten. This is a uh, Court Street Court, 19 Van Houten Street, Block 4603, Lot 6. Okay, uh, Mr. Maricondo, are you representing this applicant? Yes, good evening. I'm Maricondo. Good evening. I'm Marcus Street Patterson on behalf of Court Street Court. Okay, thank you. Okay, the applicant proposes to legalize an existing three-unit building that is assessed as a two-unit building. First floor two-bedroom unit contains 780 square feet, which is below the minimum 900 square feet required for a two-bedroom unit. The second floor units are both undersized. One-bedroom units contains 395 square feet and 490 square feet, whereas the minimum size for a one-bedroom unit is 600 square feet. Six parking spaces are proposed off-site at 36-38 Ellison Street. The proposal is within the, M is within the MD medium density mixed use district of the Great Falls redevelopment plan and all amendments to thereof. The lot has an area of uh, 2,100 square feet and is located within the Great Falls historic uh, district and this requires site plan approval and bulk variances. Uh, Mr. Deutsch, would you give us your review, please? Yes, thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Okay. The property taxes and sewer charges are paid today. Persons owning 10% more of stock ownership in Cross Street Corporation are Mario Chababo, providing an address of 55 Chianti Street, Patterson, New Jersey. Madam Surveying has prepared a survey dated February 15, 2019, indicating the parcel is frontage of 25 feet on Manhattan Street. A rear lot line that also measures 25 feet, and eastern and western side lot lines that measure 84 feet each. The parcel's area of 2,100 square feet is located on the southern side of Manhattan Street, 25 feet west of the intersection of Chianti Street and Manhattan Street. Michael Romanek has provided a two-page site plan submittal dated April 23, 2019. Line one of two indicates the tax map, the zoning map, a photograph of the building, the zoning table, the survey, and a site diagram. As indicated on the site diagram, the two-story building is H-shaped and is placed along 22 feet of the 25-foot Manhattan Street property line frontage. A three-foot wide gated alleyway provides access to the rear of the property. A note on the plan states that there are no exterior changes proposed to the building or the site. Drawing two, oh, two, two of two indicates the basement floor plan, the first floor plan, and the second floor plan. The basement plan indicates a set of interior and exterior stairs, a powder room, water and gas meters, two water heaters, and two boilers. The first floor plan indicates that the front door leads to an entry hall. From the entry hall, there are stairs to the second floor and two other doors, one leading down to the basement and the other into the 780-square-foot two-bedroom apartment. The second floor plan indicates two apartments containing one bedroom each. The preparer of the plan shall explain the four layouts of each unit in detail. A note on the plan indicates that all of the apartments are refuse and recyclable containers in their kitchen and same as brought to curbside for pickup. The applicant requests a variance of the existing first floor two bedroom apartment, which contains 780 square feet to remain as it exists, which is 120 square feet below the minimum 900 square feet required, and for variances for the two second floor apartments, which are one bedroom units, contain 395 square feet and 490 square feet to remain which are 205 square feet and 110 square feet below the 600 square feet required. Parking spaces are proposed off-site at 36-38 Ellison Street, which is a parking lot also owned by the applicant. 36-38 Ellison Street is located approximately 700 feet from the property that is the subject of this application. The purpose of the medium-density mixed-use district is to provide a variety of opportunities 
for smaller scale retail sales and services, office space, and residential living in a pedestrian oriented community. She'll be in response with the applicant and will prepare the plan to obtain a letter from the city engineer indicating the plan has satisfactorily reviewed prior to the plans being released to the construction official. Surrounding land uses. This proposal falls within the Great Falls Historic District. The use in the area is predominantly residential. Several older mill buildings have been converted to residential use. The question mark lounge is located to the east of this location. There are a few commercial establishments in the area serving the everyday needs of the residents. In conclusion, the applicant estimates the cost of this proposal approximately $5,000. I was also given a one-page memorandum from Jim Frank, Archimedes, Director of Historic Preservation Commission. This is the same memorandum that pertains to both Team McCown Street and the next application we're going to hear 20 Chianti Street. I'll read it into the record right now. It's brief. Applications for the subject properties located within the designated Great Falls Historic District are scheduled to be heard by the City of Paris and Planning Board 6.30 p.m. January 6th. The applicant, Cross Street Court, Mario Capablo, is seeking to legalize additional apartment units that are not approved for the current certificate of occupancy. Upon receiving notice of the scheduled hearing, the Division of Historic Preservation staff contacted the applicant and the architect and the attorney on December 29, 2020, requesting submission of claim review applications for each property. To date, no applications have been submitted. However, the submitted claims indicate no changes to the exterior of either building, thus there is no impact to the district. Therefore, the Historic Preservation Commission requests that the Planning Board remind the applicant that any proposed changes to exterior of a building within a designated historic district are to be reviewed by the Division of Historic Preservation per the City of Paris Municipal Code. Additionally, if it is determined that exterior changes are necessary for the correct certificate of occupancy, such as expanded egress windows or doors, the applicant must submit a design review application to the Division of Historic Preservation. So as your staff review for this proposal, Madam Chairwoman. Okay, thank you, Mr. Deutsch. Mr. Maraconda? Yes, and thank you again, Madam Chair. Uh, on behalf of the applicant, again, we're seeking uh, site plan approval this evening. As Mr. Deutsch indicates on uh, in his report, there are actually no variances created with respect to the existing conditions which we're hoping to legalize here in the historic district. I would ask, uh, I'll speak to Mr. Deutsch tomorrow, but I would like to get a copy of that letter from, I think it's Mr. Miller from the historic commission. Uh, because he did, speak to, he, he did speak to us verbally and indicated the same thing, that there is no proposal to change any of the exterior or aesthetics of the building. This will have no impact on the star conditions, if any, on the site, and there, we, we don't believe there are any. Uh, so we would expect that uh, this would be anything further would be simply administrative review uh, and not requiring a formal application based on that letter. That's my understanding. So we will keep them informed of the progress of this application, uh, provide them with an appropriate resolution, and continue to show them the copies of our final plans if an approval is granted. Uh, that being said, as I said, it's a very straightforward application. What we have here is a, an application that involves uh, a building that has existed this way for many years. My client bought this property approximately 2000. He has made no changes to the building. Uh, admittedly, the, the units are undersized, which Mr. Romanek will describe. I would say that this building on this small lot is fairly typical of the older Chianti Street neighborhood. There are many buildings that are either mixed use or multifamily on this in this area, which of course the commissioners know is one of the oldest parts of our city. Uh, that being said, I'll call Mr. Romanek as our first. Yes, speaker. and as before you do that, I just want to um, uh, the, to let the uh, records uh, show that Commissioner Cleese, you're here in attendance. Is that correct? Yes, I am. Okay, so Commissioner Cleese is in attendance, and with that being said, uh, you can call Mr. Romanek, please. Thank you.
Mr. Romanek, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. State your full name for the record. Yes, Michael Romanek, R-O-M-A-N-I-K. I'm a registered architect and licensed planner. I have an office at 391 Crooks Avenue in Patterson. Would you accept Mr. Romanek? I can't hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Me or Mr. Romanek? <laughs> Amalinda, is I'm it sorry, me? I'm asking if Amalinda, did you were you refer to me breaking up or Mr. Romanic? Mr. Romanic. All right. Did you get his? Did you get his? I do you want to swear I'm going to get him? You didn't hear? Okay. No, Mr. He, I heard him that part. He just needs to state okay. the name and everything he said after. Okay, please uh, just say your name again for the record, Mr. Romanic. Okay, and your 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 uh, your credentials, and we do recognize you as an expert witness. But say your name for the record, please. Hey, thank you, Madam Chair, lady. My name is Michael Romanic, R O M A N I K. I'm the registered architect and licensed planner for this project. I'm currently licensed as such. Yes. Okay, thank you. We do accept him as an expert witness. Okay, thank please you. proceed. On behalf of yes, I did. No, uh, Mr. Now, Mr. Maraconda, we can't hear you. So either you have to get closer or something. Okay. You have to, yeah. Okay. okay. And also, also a, 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 a chairwoman, Northrop, until you speak, your sure mic should be off. I'm getting a little interference. Okay. Uh, Mr. Manning, could you give us an overview of the site? Can everyone hear me out? Yes. Can I hear? Yes, sir. Yes, I hear you. Okay. All right, Mr. Manick, if you would. Yes, I'm going to uh, discuss sheet number one of two. The drawings are dated 4-23-2019. They'll be posted now. Sheet number one will be posted. I believe you can see the drawing, sheet number one. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, as Mr. Deutsch described the project quite well, I will describe it briefly. Uh, looking at sheet number one, commissioners, on the upper left-hand portion, you'll see the tax site location map. As you can see, the subject property is south is located on the south side of Van Houten Street, which is west of Chianti Street. That's number 19 Van Houten Street, which is the subject property. Lot number six, block 4603. Uh, looking at the photograph, commissioners, you'll see the existing facade of the subject building. Also below that on sheet number one, you'll see the zoning designation, which is in the redevelopment area of the Great Falls Historic District. So looking at the zoning table commission. Excuse, excuse, excuse me, Mr. Romanek. Yes. Is this is this 19 at Houghton Street? Yes. Oh, wait a minute. That's uh, we're looking at Cross Street. Yes, I'm sorry. Wait, we have to go to 19 Van Houghton, exactly. Okay, wait, sorry about that. It's 19. Okay. Yes, here it is. Okay, I think everybody can see that sheet now. That's correct, I see it. Okay, so um, I described the left portion of that sheet number one. You'll see also on sheet number one, commissioners, the subject survey. Uh, again, it has 25 feet of frontage along Van Houten Street. The depth is 84 feet for a total of 2,100 square feet, as you can see in the zoning table. Uh, and also, we are consistent with uh, Mr. Deutsch's zoning table as well, since it shows no variances are required. But looking to the far right of sheet number one, you'll see the site diagram, Commissioners. Again, the property has frontage on Van Houten Street, which again is west of Ellison Street. You'll see the existing uh, lot there as well as the subject building, which is 25 feet along El uh, Van Houten Street and 84 feet of uh, depth. Uh, the, uh, the building contains three apartments now, commissioners, 
And uh, the first floor contains a two-bedroom apartment, and on the second floor there are two one-bedroom apartments. That, I believe, is really the subject of this application, as far as at some point in the past that the uh, two apart the apartment on the second floor was uh, divided into two uh, one-bedroom apartments. If we can go to sheet number two now, commissioners. If we can go to sheet number two, you'll see that on the monitor soon enough. Yeah. Yes, commissioners, you can see sheet number two. And on the far left, you'll see the existing floor plan of the basement, which essentially shows an open basement area with uh, meters and a utility equipment room. There's also stairs leading up uh, to the upper level, of course. Uh, the existing first floor uh, shows the two-bedroom apartment, which has approximately 780 square feet. As you can see the existing diagram, uh, there are two bedrooms. There's the kitchen area as well as the living, room, uh, living area, which is towards the front of the building itself. You can also see the exterior stairs leading into an entry hall. Uh, to the immediate right is the entry into the subject uh, first floor apartment. And then there are interior stairs, which lead to the second floor. Commissioner, looking at the diagram to the far right of sheet number two, you'll see the existing second floor plan. And uh, after talking to the client uh, uh, when we started this project, that we believe is really the subject of the application in the sense that might have been one apartment at one time. And as you can see, it was divided uh, over the years to create two uh, one-bedroom apartments. You can see where the door designation is uh, with the circle number two, which is the second uh, apartment in the building. That's a one-bedroom apartment uh, having about 395 square feet. You'll see the kitchen area on the left of that uh, diagram, as well as the bedroom, which leads to the uh, fire escape in the rear. So there is another means of egress from this second floor apartment. Uh, you also see as you enter the apartment, there's the dining living room as well as the bathroom area there. Uh, apartment number three, which is uh, towards uh, Van Houten Avenue, as a matter of fact, contains one bedroom, and that's 490 square feet. You'll see the bedroom, which is uh, to the right rear of that particular uh, configuration of the second floor apartment. So, commissioners, we feel that the uh, the essence of the application is actually focused more on the second floor. There were two apartment. There was one apartment originally. This, is what I believe, the applicant is here to give testimony. But we believe that that uh, apartment had been split at some point into two one bedroom apartments. Again, with the square foot areas, as you can see as well. Uh, so, in essence, uh, commissioners were in the redevelopment area of the historic district. As I indicated, as far as the lot area goes, there's 25 feet of frontage with a depth of 84 feet. Uh, that totals 2,100 square feet. All conditions are pre-existing. We're not proposing any additions uh, or any changes to the front facade, as you can also see in the photograph. So the request essentially is to legalize what we have here with respect to the one apartment on the, the first floor which is a two-bedroom apartment, and also uh, the two one-bedroom apartments on the second floor. So that is what we're seeking here uh, before the commission tonight. Hi, Mr. Romanek, as well. With respect to uh, the historic district, Mr. Mr. Uh, Lloyd spoke about the uh, letter received from the historic district. This proposal, or this site plan, does not present any new footprint changes, any changes to the exterior of the building, nothing of that nature. Is that right? No, that is correct. Essentially to use the existing building for what it's being used now, the right. number of apartments. Had been assessed as a two, uh, and some point many years ago had been converted. Uh, with respect to um, the historic district, then, we, we, we will not impact on any of the historic district requirements by this legalization application. No, oh, that, that is correct. And again, looking at the photograph on sheet number one, you'll see there's no changes to the facade. You can also see the relationship of the adjoining buildings on the left side and also the right side uh, of the building, as you can also see now on the monitor. Uh, so there will be no changes, and we feel that uh, it is consistent with the existing land use composition in the area. Uh, there are multiple families, certainly some of the uh, uh, Great Falls buildings have been converted to multiple family dwellings as well. Uh, so we feel that we are very consistent with respect to the usage of the building. And there is there is parking, uh, which is an important aspect. 
the owners here also for the same application, Tower 20 Chianti Street, which has an adjoining large parking area. So number 19, uh, that is the subject we're discussing um, at first, uh, will have the parking provided, which is approximately a block away on Chianti Street, which adjoins the applicant's uh, other building, which is also going to be discussed tonight. So there is adequate parking. There will be uh, parking for six spaces, which are required, and that parking lot is located at 36-30 Ellison Street, again, which is adjoins 20 Chianti Street. Okay. And, uh, in your estimation, in terms of the surrounding area, we're very close to bus transportation as well as the downtown business district? Yes, that is correct. Also, the historic district. In the historic district, of course. Yes. Okay. That's all I have, Madam Chair, at this time for Mr. Romani. Okay. Do you have any other witnesses you're calling this evening? Uh, Mr. Capablo, just briefly to ratify our testimony. Uh, then we can bring him, we'll bring him in after I open this up. I'm going to open it to the public and then I'm going to turn it to the commissioners and then we can bring in uh, the owner. Okay, so at this time I'm going to open up uh, questions if anyone in the public has any questions of, um, of Mr. Romanek uh, for this application. Just questions only based on his testimony. Okay, please call in at 973-321-1579. The meeting ID is 711-680-001. I will allow two minutes to call in, three minutes for the questions. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, we have no callers at this time. Yeah. We'll just wait. Ryan, is that you? Chairwoman Northrop, we have no callers at this time. Would you like to give another 30 seconds? Uh, I'll give it, I'll give it, you know what, I'm going to open up to the commissioners. If there's any callers, I'll go back to them, okay? Okay, so, thank um, you. All right. Uh, commissioners, any commissioners have any questions of Mr. Romanek? Okay, commissioners, you're all quiet. All right. Uh, I'll give it another 10 seconds here, 15 seconds. Let's see if anybody calls in. If no one calls in, then I'd like to hear from the owner, please. Okay, I'm not hearing anyone. Okay. No callers. Okay, thank you. Mr. Malconda, can we hear from the owner, please? Well, we will. He's um, starting over as we speak there. <laughs> so, Mr. Pavalvo, uh, you're going to be sworn in as the owner, okay? Okay. Right here? You swear right. from the testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yeah. Keep up your voice up. Yes. Yes. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Aquaviva. Can you say your name first? Sorry? How's your name, Marilyn? Uh, last name? Yeah, Mr. Maricondo, just is Mr. Cabello testifying only in the capacity as the owner of the property or also as a principal or having any um, direct affiliation with the applicant itself? He's the owner of the property. Principal of the court and also the individual. Right. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. The individual owner of the property and see all the entire of Cross Street Corporation as well. Madam Chair, I can't hear Can you hear I, Because everybody's microphone is on, please mute your mics one person at a time so Alalinda can hear us properly. First of all, can, we, can the witness please state his name for the record and spell it last name? Sure. Mario, state the name of somebody. Mario Capalbo, C A P A L B O. Thank you. Uh, you're the Street Corporation, is that right? Yes. And you all this property. I can't hardly hear. Yes, you. yes. Not you, Mr. Aquaviva. If Mike is off that. I'm not saying anything. I can't hear Mr. Marapondo. Okay, I don't know why. I'm right next to Mr. Capano. Can you hear me now? I, I can hear you. Okay. Now. And Melinda, can you hear me? Yeah, so my question is, 
Is Mr. Cavallo testifying only as the owner of the property or in some sort of capacity as the principal of the applicant as well? He's the principal of the applicant and the owner. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, Mr. Cavallo, you're the owner of Cross Street Corporation, right? Yes. Should it be 20 years? Yes. This property, this is the design, the way Mr. Romantic laid it out, is the way the building was set up? Yes. And at this point, you want to legalize it. You were advised that the tax assessor only has it as a two-family. Is that right? Yes. And you agree with Mr. Romantic, you're not making any changes to the interior? No. The property, a couple pieces down there in the Chanty Street area. They can provide the six spaces for these tenants if needed, right? Yes. Okay. Right now, of these three tenants, how many own cars, if any? Uh, the three tenants? Yes. I don't know. Two of them? Two of cars now? As far as you know? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, you agree with Mr. Romantic's testimony on your behalf? You agree with Mr. Romantic's testimony? Okay. That's all I have, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, so once again, I'm going to ask if anyone in the public has any questions on the owner of the property, Mr. Cotago, by calling in at 973-321-1579, and the meeting ID is 711-680-001. And while we're waiting for the phone calls, I'm going to see if anyone of our commissioners has any questions of Mr. Cotago. Commissioners, anyone, any questions of Mr. Cotago? Okay, no, no questions. I'm going to give it just another maybe minute or so, see if anyone calls in. Mr. Aguavigo, you lost your video, uh, the, your, the video camera, if you can hear me. You lost my video? Yes, your video, your face is not there. I don't see you, so I don't know what happened. Let me see. Oh, I see what happened. My, um, the stand that I have my iPad on, hit the, no. off the video. Hold on, let me just offer her. Okay. Right, so we have no call at this time, Chairwoman. Okay. All right, so that being said, okay, I see you now, yes. Okay, so that being said, um, Mr. Mack would you like to summarize, please? Yes, thank you again, Madam Chair. Um, as we indicated in our opening and in our testimony, we believe this is a very straightforward application to legalize an existing structure. It's very typical and conforming to the downtown business district. No impact on the historic district whatsoever, as per Mr. Miller's uh, letter. Uh, and uh, we believe it's an opportunity to continue to provide quality housing. As you can see, the exterior of the building is very nice. And uh, we have the ability, because of his longtime ownership down in the Chauncey Street area, to provide adequate parking for this site. Uh, and again, all the residents are close to public transportation, the downtown walking business district as well. I ask the board to consider a motion for approval. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any uh, commissioner would like to make a vote? Madam Chair, this is uh, Commissioner Ogin. Yes. Can we put a motion a uh, quick question? You said there is no uh, variance, uh, you know, variance is requested. No. A uh, question from the maximum lot coverage. It said minimum requirement 90% and proposed 40%. Would you please uh, take a look at it? The application, the lot, lot coverage. Are you talking to Mr. Romanic? I'm, I'm talking to, uh, you know, anybody can uh, take a look at it. It says no variance requested, but um, the proposed uh, lot coverage is that. I see, I, I see, I see the minimum requires is 90 and the proposed is 40. I, I, I can answer that. Okay. Um, this is a redevelopment area, and the, the Great Falls Historic District was probably the first uh, area in the city to be developed, and there were no standard lot sizes um, at the time. Lot sizes varied from, well, this one is 2,100 square feet, but there may be others that are smaller, so in order not to penalize people that, you know, have long established smaller lot sizes that in the redevelopment plan, there is no minimum lot requirement. I hope that answered your question. And that's our understanding as well. 
Basically, you're saying this is existing for many, probably over 100 years. So this is so this is basically what it is. It's it's in between two buildings, so you can't make it any larger than it is. Is that what you're saying? Well, the whole yes. area um, doesn't was developed without yeah. standard lot sizes. Right. Right. Okay. So, All right. So, so 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 to require a variance um, at this late date wouldn't be fair to the uh, the property owners. I just said yes, Mr. Aquaviva, yes. Thank you, Alan Sure. Um, Mike, I, I just have a quick question for you to uh, clarify for the board and, and me for that matter. What is the role of the Great Falls Historic and Surf District in this application? Because I know he's in the zone. I heard you say some things at the beginning. I heard Mr. Curtis and Barrett Mom say some things. But um, I just want to clarify it so we have it on the record. <laughs> Uh, Mike, your, your, your microphone is off. It's basically, it's a, I guess, if this is legalized, whether whether the, either the building department or the fire department or some other um, agency requires either larger windows or larger doors that would affect the, the side of the building, the historic commission would need to approve same. You know, Mr. Arcon, you would, you know, you agreed with all that on the record. Um, my concern, Michael, is do I need to put in the resolution if this application is approved any additional language other than what I normally put, which is, you know, any approvals by the Patterson Historic Preservation Commission, um, you know, if they're required, the applicant would adhere to it. Um, I don't believe I have to put anything else in the resolution, but um, unless, unless you feel differently. Uh, my thought would be that the resolution should incorporate language that based upon the re preliminary review of the planning, uh, the, cap the historic uh, planning uh, commission, that there, on its face this application does not require further approvals or uh, any other conditions uh, to be set forth by the historic commission because it doesn't uh, seek any modifications of the exterior or additional footprint and uh but if there as this mr billy accurately indicates if we're doing changes to the windows and other exterior changes as a condition of the building department then we would have to go back to the entire commission that's my understanding i i believe i, I just want to say i believe that mr uh, mr Deutsch read the letter into the record anyway which clearly states okay that if they're going to make any changes to the exterior of the building it has to be approved by the historic district yeah. is that correct am i correct, correct? yes okay okay um then, then i know how i know how to work in the resolution that's fine we have anything else you want to Take that as a note. Okay, thank you. So, okay, that being said, then I'm going to go out and ask if anyone would like to make a motion on this application. I'll go for uh, okay. okay, all right, yeah, Commissioner Wadeen, please go ahead. On the application of Post Street Corporation 55 Tennessee Street, Hash, New Jersey 07501, property address 19 and Hash Street, Block 4603, Block 6. I move that the board appointing the resolution granting the uh, site plan approval, block variances subject to uh, city engineers. Uh, engineers and Great Falls History Preservation Commission approval. Okay. Uh, Yes, yes, okay, good. Okay, roll call, please, uh, Madam, Madam Chair. Well, thank you for the um, promotion, <laughs> Madam Secretary. I, 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 I sometimes, listen, sometimes I want to be that in there, okay? <laughs> sometimes I'd rather you be chair. Go ahead. <laughs> Commissioners, Commissioner Ahmed. Yes. Commissioner Savalos. Yes. Commissioner Cleves. Yes. Commissioner Issa. Yes. Commissioner Eugene. Yes. 
Commissioner Cook. Yes. Yes. Chairwoman Northrop. No. Commissioner Cook. Yes. Okay. I'll say yes. Okay, I hear you. Sorry. And uh, okay, so a lot easier if your if your chair was wrong, so the, the public can see who's voting as well. Okay. Uh, and Chairwoman Northrop. Yes. Did we do Commissioner on that? I didn't hear him either. Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. And my and on the yes. This application has been granted. Okay. Thank, thank you. Okay, so now we'll go on and do um, the second application, which is the Cross Street, Chianzi Street. Am I correct, Mr. Deutsch? Okay, I, I read lips because your microphone is off. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's on now. Okay, good. All right, so let me, uh, okay, so let me read. Uh, the applicant proposes to legalize an existing five-unit building that is accessed as a four-unit uh, building. The first floor, one-bedroom unit contains 526 square feet, which is below the minimum of 600 square feet required for a one-bedroom unit. And the first floor, two-bedroom unit contains 500 square feet, which is below the minimum 900 square feet required for a two-bedroom unit. The second floor, one-bedroom unit bedroom unit contains 405 square feet, which is below the minimum of 600 uh, square feet um, required for a one-bedroom unit. And the second floor two-bedroom unit contains 586 square feet, which is below the 900 square feet required for a two-bedroom unit. Therefore, a uh, three-bedroom unit contains 1,020 square feet, which is below the minimum of 1,100 square feet required for a three-bedroom unit. Ten parking spaces are proposed off-site at 36-38 Ellison Street. This proposal is within the MD, medium density, mixed-use district of the Great Falls Redevelopment Plan and all amendments to thereof. The lot has an area of 1,281 square feet and is located within the Great Falls Historic District, and it requires site plan site plan approval, approval and both variances. And Mr. Maraconda, are you uh, representing this applicant also? I am now Maraconda on behalf of the same applicant. Okay, thank you. And uh, so Mr. George, would you give us your review on this application, please? Yes, thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Property taxes and sewer charges are paid today. Persons owning 10% more stock ownership in Cross Street Corporation are Mario Cabalbo providing an address of 55 Chelsea Street, Patterson, New Jersey. The man of surveying has prepared a survey dated February 13, 2019, indicating the parcel is frontage of 20.17 feet on Chelsea Street, an additional frontage of 63.5 feet on Ellison Street, and side and rear lot lines also 25 feet and 63.5 feet. The parcel is area of 1,281 square feet and is located on the southwest corner of Ellison Street and Chianti Street. Michael Romanic has provided a three-page site plan submittal dated April 25, 2019. Program 3 indicates the tax map, the zoning map, a photograph of the building, the zoning table, the survey, and a site diagram. As indicated in the site diagram, the building occupies the entire lot from lot line to lot line along both Ellison Street and Chianti Street. A note on the plan states there are no exterior changes proposed to the building or the site. Drawing 2 of 2 indicates the basement floor plan and the first floor plan. The basement plan indicates stairs that lead only to Ellison Street and not the upper floors of the building. Also indicated are gas and water meters, an electric panel board, electric meters, and water heaters and boilers. The first floor plan indicates the front door entrance the 526 square foot one bedroom apartment is located at the building's corner. The front door entrance to the 500 square foot two bedroom apartment is located in Ellison Street on the building's western corner. A stairwell from the door also leads to the second and third floors. Floor 3 of 3 indicates the second floor plan and the third floor plan. There are two apartments on the second floor, a one-bedroom apartment of 405 square feet and a two-bedroom apartment of 586 square feet. The third floor contains one apartment with three bedrooms of 1,020 square feet. The preparer of the plan to explain the floor layouts of each unit in detail. 
A note on the plan indicates that all the apartments have refuse and recyclable containers in their kitchens, and same is brought to curbside for pickup. The applicant requests a variance that the existing first floor one bedroom apartment, which contains 526 square feet, to remain as it exists, which is 74 square feet below the minimum 600 square feet required, and for a variance for the two bedroom apartment, which contains 500 square feet, to remain as it exists, which is 400 square feet below the minimum 900 square feet required. For the second floor one bedroom apartment, the applicant requests a variance for the apartment to remain as it exists, as it contains 405 square feet, which is 195 square feet below the minimum 600 square feet required, and a variance for the two bedroom apartment of 586 square feet remains, which is 314 square feet below the minimum required. The third floor three bedroom apartment requests a variance to remain as it exists, which is a three bedroom 1,020 square foot apartment, which is 80 feet below the minimum required. Ten parking spaces are proposed off-site at 36-38 Ellison Street, which is a parking lot also owned by the applicant. 36-38 Ellison Street is located directly west of the property that is the subject of this application. The purpose of the medium-density mixed-use district is to provide a variety of opportunities for small-scale retail sales and services, office space, and residential living, and pedestrian-oriented community. It shall be the responsibility of the applicant and or the preparer of the plan to obtain a letter from the city engineer indicating the plans have been satisfactorily reviewed prior to the plans being released to the construction official. Surrounding land uses. This proposal falls within the Great Falls Historic District. The use in the area is of predominantly older residential buildings with some first floor commercial spaces. Blue Costello Park is located on the east side of Chianti Street. In conclusion, the applicant estimates the cost of this proposal at approximately $5,000. So as your staff review for this proposal, Madam Chairwoman. Thank you, Mr. Maraconda. Yes, again, Alan Maraconda on behalf of Cross Street Corp. Uh, we'll be presenting Mr. Romanic and Mr. Cababo. These are the, this is the same applicant owner as the earlier application this evening. Uh, again, we have a situation with an existing uh, building. We're seeking to legalize the uh, five units that are contained within the structure. I think the same uh, ground rules would apply with respect to the historic district requirements as no exterior changes or uh, building design is being changed. Uh, and again, we would comply if there were requirements from the building or engineering department that required the historic district to look at them, we would do so. Uh, basically, I'll be calling Mr. Romanic as the architect planner. They'll describe the interior layouts of the building and their minimum uh, square footages and uh, explain to the board how the building is utilized along with the parking lot as well. So we can call Mr. Romanic at this time. Thank you. Mr. Romanic, please raise your right hand. We swear our friend the testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. State your full name for the record. Yes, Michael Romanic, R-O-M-A-N-I-K. And please state your just state your credential. Just just state it. That's okay. And we'll go ahead. Registered architect and licensed planner. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. We we accept uh, Mr. Romanic as an expert witness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please continue. Okay. Uh, so the court, of course, uh, you're to prepare this site for you that's going to be Wait, 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 Mr. Maracondi, you're going to have to speak into the microphone somehow because you're muffled. You're very muffled. And I don't think Mr. Uh, Amalinda rather can hear you. Okay, let's let try again. Nice, which, I, wait, I don't know why that's happening, but we'll do the best we can. Okay. Uh, again, okay. we are looking to present Mr. Romanic as our witness on site plan. Mr. Romanic, you prepared this site plan, is that correct? Yes, correct. Could you give us an overview of the site? Yes, uh, course, if you look at number C, which is now posted on the monitor, uh, you'll see the tax site location map on the upper left-hand corner of the sheet. Mr. Romanic, uh, I do not see it. Okay, let's see. Uh, 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 let's see. U
Yes, yes, we can see it now. Okay. All right, Commissioners, as I had started to indicate, looking at the tax site location map on sheet number one, you'll see the location of the subject property. It's on the southwest corner of Chianti Street and Ellison Street. And as a matter of fact, looking at the tax map, uh, diagram, you'll see the application that was previously discussed on Van Houten Street, which is a block away essentially owned by the same applicant, of course. You'll see a photograph of the subject property. Uh, the facade, the longer facade is the Ellison Street facade. And um, as I indicated, it's on the corner of Chianti Street. Also located in the Great Falls Historic District redevelopment area, as you can also see in the zoning map. We do have a copy of the survey, which is shown on sheet number one as well. Uh, there is 20 feet approximately of uh, frontage along Chianti Street and approximately 64 feet of uh, property frontage along Ellison Street. You'll see the site diagram, which indicates the existing building. Uh, the site coverage is approximately 100%. It occupies fully the the building, which again is approximately 20 by 63 feet. Uh, the existing building contains five apartments. There are two apartments on the second floor. There is one apartment on the third floor. And there are two apartments on the ground floor, which we believe is the focus of the application tonight. Uh, again, that was probably divided into two apartments. That is the ground floor years ago. So we'll be looking at the floor plans, uh, commissioners, as we proceed. And if we do turn to sheet number two of the set of drawings, you'll see sheet number two, commissioners. Uh, the diagram on the left represents the existing basement plan. Uh, it's an open basement. I was in this building uh, personally. I know the layout. And as you can see also, we did locate the existing utility equipment as far as water heaters and boilers go. There's a stairway that leads to the uh, ground floor as well. Uh, there's a second uh, cellar access, uh, which leads to Ellison Street, as also noted on the uh, basement floor plan. You'll see the water meters, there's gas meters, as well as the electric uh, uh, meter boards as well. Uh, on sheet number two, Commissioner Jones, you see the existing ground floor. And as I indicated, we believe after talking to the applicant when I started this project that that very well uh, is the focus of the application where we do have two apartments. You'll see the indication of Chianti Street, which is uh, horizontally uh, represented by the uh, ground floor plan. And to the right, uh, represented vertically on the floor plan, you'll see Ellison Street. The immediate apartment on the corner uh, does represent an existing one-bedroom apartment, which has about 526 square feet. You'll see the door with the number one. That's uh, apartment number one. You'll see it is a one-bedroom apartment. There's a bathroom there, as well as a dining kitchen area uh, as well. Uh, the apartment towards the rear, uh, which is apartment number two, has access from the Ellison Street exterior door. You'll see a kitchen area, as well as a dining area. Uh, there's a bedroom, uh, as you can see, which has uh, a window along Ellison Street. There's a uh, bathroom as well. So we believe that this is the application uh, uh, focus tonight, but we will also look at sheet number three commissioners, which show the apartments on the second floor and third floor. And that would be sheet number three, which I believe you can see now. As you can see, commissioners, uh, looking at the apartment in the rear, labeled number three, that's a one-bedroom apartment, which has 405 square feet. Uh, you can see the configuration of the room layout. Again, it's uh, essentially the bedroom, which is towards uh, uh, Cross Street, if anything. Um, you'll also see apartment number four. Uh, that has a combined living, kitchen, dining area, and you'll see the two bedrooms uh, facing Chianti Street as well. The existing third floor plan, which is the di diagram to the right, that's an existing three-bedroom apartment, which has over 1,000 square feet. Uh, that's apartment number five. So there are five existing apartments in this structure. And again, we believe that uh, the focus really is the ground floor plan, which is on sheet number two, as I had described, uh, which shows two uh, one-bedroom apartments. And um, we believe that possibly in the past, uh, there was a either a two-bedroom apartment or three-bedroom apartment, which uh, completely utilized this ground floor. 
So again, that's a summary of the project itself. Uh, Mr. Maripanda. This is a presentation. Uh, I would ask uh, Mr. Mayor just one or two things. Uh, there's no um, exterior changes or footprint changes required. Is that right? No, none whatsoever. Okay. And uh, similar to the first application, you're describing existing conditions. Is that right? That is right. For existing conditions, and again, the same thing applies to the parking. We are required to have 10 parking spaces. Uh, we do have the adjoining uh, parking lot. As a matter of fact, if you look at the photograph, you'll see towards the uh, back of the building, which has frontage on Ellison Street, you'll see the uh, cyclone fencing there, which represents the enclosure of the parking area. So we do provide sufficient parking as well, which is also shared with uh, number 12 in Houghton Street, as we previously discussed tonight. All well, these properties are owned by the applicant. Is that right? That is correct. No, no, we, again, it's, uh, commissioners, it's uh, five dwelling units currently, and uh, it is assessed as four uh, dwelling units, and we're seeking, obviously, uh, approval to legalize the five apartments in this building. There are no, no changes whatsoever proposed on the exterior facades. Several small units, which are very common and typical of the downtown business and historic district area, which is walking distance to many places. That is uh, quite... Uh, proper because I've been in other apartments in the general area and they're all small apartments on small lots. That's all I have at this time. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So at this time, I'm going to be opening up to the public for any questions. Um, if anyone in the public has any questions of Mr. Romantic based on his testimony, please call in at 973-321-1579. And the meeting ID number is 711-680-001. Um, I'm going to give it two minutes for call-ins and three minutes for questions. Thank you. We have no callers at this time. Okay, so I'll open up questions to the commissioners. Commissioners, any questions of Mr. Romanic on this application? Okay, commissioners? Okay. Good up, Jen. This is Commissioner Dean. Yes. All right, so, um, Madam Chair, yesterday I drove by to the uh, Ellison Street where they're talking about the parking spaces, 36 just 38 uh, Ellison Street. Yes. And, and if I'm not wrong, I, if they can answer correctly, I think there are 26 parking spaces in the, in the lot. And I saw that almost all of them are occupied. So my question is, 10 of them, 10 of them are going to be used by uh, 20 Manhattan Street, and six of them are going to be used by 19 Manhattan Street. My question is, uh, in, you know, is there any other property using this parking lot or not? This, this site, this parking lot area, which we provided to the board, is, is a common area of parking for both of the residential buildings that have been presented to this board. But Mr. Papalo also has more than adequate parking on this site, as you talked about, a total of 26 spaces. So he is able to rent additional spaces to other residential parties in the area that need parking off site. So there's no change in the status of the parking use at all. Thank you. Okay, any other questions by any other commissioners? Okay, hearing none, I'm going to um, ask uh, Mr. Maraconda, can you please uh, call Mr. Capalco back about this application? Sure. Uh, coming forward, please speak up and speak into the microphone so the court 
reporter can hear so the reporter cannot hear this uh, hear your comments please okay Mr. Kapawa, please raise your right hand you swear our friend testimony about to give us the truth the whole truth and nothing about the truth there you go your phone name for the record uh, Mario Capallo. Okay. Thank you. Now, Mr. Marconda, Mr. Marconda, you got to speak into the microphone. We can't hear you. I'm sorry. Okay, sorry about that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, anyway, Blessing Corporation is your company, is that right? Yes. Individually of this company. I didn't hear you. No, I, I need you, Chairwoman, to mute your mic, please. Continue. Okay. All right, uh, you can hear me now, right? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. All right, so, um, Mario, you heard all the testimony of Mr. Romanic about this building, is that right? Yes. And you're in agreement with that testimony? Yes. There's no change in the design or use of this building proposed. You just want to legalize it as a five, and you understand you'll be bound by all city codes, building department codes, and state of New Jersey, Department of Community Development, as you are now, already, as a multifamily building. Is that right? Yes. And you understand that if you make any changes to the exterior of the building, you would have to go before the Historic District uh, Commission. Yes. Okay. That's all I have, Madam Chair. Okay, I'm going to open it up to the public for questions for Mr. Capalbo. Uh, the phone number for the public to ask questions is 973 Three two one one five seven nine. The meeting ID is seven one one six eight zero 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 one. And while we're waiting for those phone calls to come in, I'll allow uh, two minutes for call-ins, uh, three minutes for questions. And while we're doing that, does any one of the commissioners, any person, have a question of Mr. Uh, Capalbo, commissioners? While we're waiting for the phone calls, any? Okay, I, I have a question. I just want to clear something up um, in my mind. Okay, so there's approximately 25 parking spaces, 26 parking spaces in the parking lot that Mr. Catalbo owns. Yes. Okay, so um, right now there are ten. Are there are there tenants living in these buildings now? Yes, they are fully occupied. Okay, so they're the ones that are using some of that parking. And then he can also rent out other spaces to people who need it. But the but the tenants have enough parking, correct? Correct. Yeah, yeah. We provided for our site plan and survey uh, verification that there the fifteen spaces that are required for these two buildings, I believe Mr. Romano could confirm that, are more than adequately supplied for on the parking lot site with overflow okay. parking also. All right, good enough. So let's just give it another minute and see if anyone calls in. Thank you. We have no callers at this time, Madam Chair. Okay, so um, Mr. Maraconda, would you like to summarize, please? Uh, just thank you again, Commissioner, for hearing us. Uh, Mr. Capallo is a longtime Patterson resident and businessman. Uh, he maintains these buildings, we believe, very well. He'll continue to be a good landlord, providing a particular type of housing in the, near, in the historic district, which gives uh, residents easy access to the downtown walking business district and public transportation, of course, right in the immediate area, and access to the Great Falls Historic District, which, of course, is very important. So with all those points being made, we ask the board uh, for consideration for a motion for approval. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any commissioner would like to make a motion on this application? Yes, Commissioner Dean, please. Thank you. On the application of Cross Street Corporation, 55 Central Street, Addison, New Jersey, over 751, yeah. Central Street, Block 40, 4607, Lot 5 and 36, the study Ellison Street, Block 4, 4607, Lot 4. I know that the Board Attorney prepared a resolution granting site plan approval, block variances, subject to city engineer approval, and uh, Great Falls History Preservation Commission approval. Thank you. Do I have a second? 
Second by Commissioner Mr. Ceballos, roll call please. Madam Secretary. <laughs> Commissioner. <laughs> Commissioner Ahmed. Yes. Commissioner Ahmed? Yes. He said yes. Oh, I didn't hear him, I'm sorry. Commissioner Ceballos. Yes. Commissioner Cleves. Yes. Commissioner Issa. Yes. Commissioner Eugene. He said yes. Commissioner Cook. Yes. And Chairwoman Northrop. Yes. I didn't hear Commissioner Cleves' answer. She said yes. Okay, I couldn't hear her. Okay, great. Okay, um... I guess, uh, thank you very much. Congratulations. Uh, do we, do we, have, we have other business? Um, we have one resolution other than that. Oh, okay. So then, then I guess... Do you have any resolution? I will. Just give me one second after you. Sure. Okay. Okay. Hang on, everyone, please. Okay, you ready? Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Yes. Okay. On the application of JCM Investors 1012 LLC for the property located at 83 87 Dodwin Avenue, Block 3604, Lots 20, 24 and 25, the property being located in the RA2 zone of the Fort Ward Redevelopment Plan, the applicant Seek requesting the site plan approval and all variances to remove the existing dwelling on lot 24 and construct a new five story residential building with a total of 20 units. The matter was considered and approved by the board um, at its September 28, 2020 special meeting. Um, one other note the application amended the application, the, I'm sorry, the applicant amended the application on the record. To request and seek a and seek a reduction to 15 units. Um, do I have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second, second Commissioner Dean. I think I heard him say second. Roll call. Uh, Secretary, I, 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 I didn't know I was on, on mute. Uh, Commissioner, Commissioner Eugene? Yes. Yes, sir. And Chairwoman Northrop. Chairwoman Northrop. Yes, is that it for this evening? That is it. All yes. right, one question. Next meeting. Yes, I just wanted to go over that. This, we have three remaining meetings in January. Monday, January 11th, we have one special meeting for a charter school, 7th Avenue, between East 34th and East 35th Street. Okay. Our remaining regular meeting for January is two weeks from tonight, January 20th. And if the board would uh, agree to meet on Tuesday, January 26th for a special meeting. One special meeting? No, two. I'm, uh, some, I hear a whole bunch of trashing going on. I don't know what the hell that is, but okay. In the meantime, okay, yes. Um, I'm okay with those meetings. Thanks. Okay, let's keep them there. Let's do it. And I wish everybody's, well, you're in your home, so be safe, okay? <laughs> and, and I'll see you all. Good evening, I'll see you everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year. Yeah.